How do we count particles? Let's find out in this video. The words pair, dozen, and gross is equal to a certain number. For example, pair is equal to two pieces of whatever object, dozen is equal to 12 pieces of whatever object, and gross is equal to 144 pieces of whatever object. Now for atoms, since they are too small, we use a certain word to count them. The word that we use is what we call a mole. Mole is the number used to count particles such as atoms, compounds, molecules, ions, protons, electrons, and neutrons, and the like. A mole is equal to the Avogadro's number, which is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now remember that these particles can be atoms, molecules, or ions. In order for you to visualize what is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, let us identify how many zeros are there in that figure. We write 6.022, then add 20 zeros. And then let's add all the commas. And that is what one mole is equal. If we have one mole of the element hydrogen, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of the element hydrogen. Now what about its mass? To identify the mass of one mole of hydrogen, you just refer to a periodic table of elements and then look for its atomic weight or sometimes called atomic mass. So the atomic weight or the atomic mass of the element hydrogen is equal to 1. That means the mass of one mole of hydrogen is equal to 1 gram. If I have one mole of the element lithium, how many particles do we have? We have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of the element lithium. And what is the mass of one mole of lithium? We have a total of 7 grams. 7 grams. Now lastly, let's try to identify the mass of one mole of the element sodium. So we have Na. And how many particles of sodium do we have? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of the element sodium. And the mass of one mole of sodium or for example you were able to collect this number of pieces of the particles of sodium it will have a mass of 23 grams for example we have three moles of the element hydrogen what is the mass of that amount of hydrogen we know that in every one mole of hydrogen it weighs 1 gram. So that means if we have 3 moles of hydrogen, we have a total of 3 grams. Another example is if we have 5 moles of the element lithium, what is the mass of that lithium? We know that in every 1 mole of lithium, it weighs 7 grams. So 5 moles of lithium, 35 grams of lithium. For our first example, we have 4.3 moles of phosphorus to be converted into its respective mass. So the first step is to identify the conversion factor between moles of phosphorus to grams of phosphorus. We need a periodic table of element for this one. Based from our periodic table of elements, in every 1 mole of phosphorus, it is equal to 31 grams of phosphorus. We have 4.3 moles of phosphorus as our given. We multiply that with the conversion factor between moles of phosphorus and grams of phosphorus. You should always remember that 
Whatever the given, always remember that whatever the unit of the given should always be the unit of the denominator. So therefore, between moles of phosphorus and 31 grams of phosphorus, what you will write here is 1 mole of phosphorus. And the one that you should write at the numerator is 31 grams of phosphorus. Cancel the unit of measurements, moles of phosphorus to moles of phosphorus. And what you will get is 133.3 grams of phosphorus as your final answer. We have here 10.12 moles of chlorine to be converted into its mass. So the first step is to again find its conversion factor, which is in every one mole of the element chlorine, it weighs 35 grams of chlorine. Therefore, 10.12 moles of chlorine multiplies conversion factor which is 1 mole of chlorine is to 35 grams of chlorine. Since mole of chlorine is our given, therefore the denominator is mole of chlorine. And then the numerator is 35 grams of chlorine. Do not forget to cancel the unit of measurements and you will get 354.2 grams of chlorine. For our third example, let's take a look at the conversion between 6.1 moles of silicon to the number of particles. So the first step is to find the conversion factor between moles of silicon to the number of particles of silicon. We have said in our previous discussion that in every one mole of whatever object, example silicon, there is a total of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces of particles of silicon. So we will be using this conversion factor to solve the question. We write 6.1 moles of silicon. And then we will be using our conversion factor. So since the the given is in moles of silicon, therefore what we will write at the denominator is 1 mole of silicon. And then on the numerator is the number of particles 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of silicon. And then solving for our equation which is 6.1 times the Avogadro's number divided by 1 what you will get is 3.67 times 10 raised to the 24th particles of silicon. And that is your final answer. If you are given a mass of an atom, say a silicon, and you are asked to convert it into its number of atoms, how do you solve it? To solve this question, the process is still the same, which is to find first the conversion factor between mass and atoms of silicon. We know that in every one mole of silicon, the mass of that one mole is 28 grams of silicon. And in every one mole of silicon, it is equal to the Avogadro's number times 10 raised to the 23rd atoms of silicon. So don't get confused if I use the word atoms here because particles can refer to as molecules, atoms, ions, depending on the given. Since the given here is just an element, I can use the word atoms. Since we are looking for the relationship between grams of silicon and atoms of silicon, we can actually use this conversion factor. We write 32 grams of silicon, multiply it using our conversion factor. Grams is our given, therefore we write here 28 grams of silicon is equivalent to the Avogadro's number times 10 raised to the 23rd atoms of silicon. 
compute for our equation 32 grams times the Avogadro's number divided by 28 grams, you will get 6.88 times 10 raised to the 23rd atoms of silicon. There you go. Now let's try doing some conversion using compounds. If we have 3.3 moles of glucose, C6H12O6, what is its equivalent mass? Since we don't have a list or a periodic table for the mass for a compound, we need to first compute for the mass of one mole of glucose. So to do this, you first need to write the elements present in the compound. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Identify their respective subscripts. We have 6 for carbon, 12 for hydrogen, and then 6 for oxygen. And then multiply that to their respective masses. So for carbon, the mass of a carbon, its atomic mass, is 12 grams. For hydrogen, it's 1 gram. And for oxygen, we have 16 grams. Then, multiply and find their products. And then find the sum of the three products. So that means our conversion factor is in every one mole of C6H12O6, the mass is equivalent to 180 grams of c 6 h 12 O six. We can now use this conversion factor to solve for our question. We have 3.3 moles of glucose multiply using our conversion factor. Mole here, so therefore 1 mole of glucose is equivalent to 180 grams of glucose and then 3.3 multiplied by 180 divided by 1 will give you 594 grams of c6 h12o6 as our final answer for our last example let's consider this question 545.12 grams of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, is equivalent to how many molecules of calcium carbonate? Since we don't have a direct source for the mass of a 1 mole of calcium carbonate, we need to first compute it. We identify all the elements present, which are calcium, carbon, and the element oxygen. Then identify their respective subscripts, one for calcium, one for carbon, and then three for oxygen. Then we will multiply them to their respective masses per element. For calcium, we have 40 grams. For carbon, we have 12 grams. And for oxygen, it's equivalent to 16 grams. Identify their products. And then compute for the sum of the three numbers. We can now use this number as part of our conversion factor, which is in every one mole of our compound CaCO3, it is equivalent to the number of particles, the Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of your CaCO3. Which is also equivalent to 100 grams of your CaCO3. We have 545.12 grams of CaCO3. Multiply that using our conversion factor. This is the only one that we will be using. 
because our concern is only moles, rather molecules, and the mass, grams. So therefore, you will write at the denominator, since this is in grams, you will write here 100 grams of CaCO3. And then on the numerator side, you will write the Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CaCO3. CaCO3. And then solve for the equation 545.12 multiplied with the Avogadro's number divided by 100 will give you an answer of 3.28 times 10 raised to the 24th molecules of CaCO3. And you already arrive at the final answer.